Okay, checking one, two, three, four, test one, two. That's working, that's working. Make certain everything else is plugged in where it needs to be. Hope everything is going well on your end. If you can hear me, knock on the screen. We'll let everybody know what's going on. And looking pretty quiet as we go into the evening hours of Monday. No big problems being seen here. And it looks like the connection's holding steady. And we have audio, which is a nice thing always to have when you're doing stuff like this instead of doing pantomime weather. Looks like everything is exactly where it needs to be so far. And testing for the last second. So far looking pretty good, so we'll go ahead and get things going here. Thanks to everybody for joining us for tonight. We are live on Periscope, Facebook, and Twitter all at the same time. I'm amazed that it works as well. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik from House Onik in somewhere in Memphis, Tennessee, and keeping an eye on what's going on across the Mid-South right now where it comes to anything involving weather. Things are relatively quiet where the weather is concerned, but we will be seeing again the possibility of more areas of showers and thunderstorms coming up over the next several days. We'll take a look at that in the forecast in just a little bit. Thanks for joining us, and if you'd like to know more about what's happening here with weather, we'll talk about that. We'll also talk about uh, burn conditions out there. If you're starting any campfires in the next couple of days, heading out for a quick camp out during the summer endings, back to school season, we'll have more on that coming up in just a little bit. Drop your locations and your weather reports into the comments section. Let us know what the temperature is at your location. If you've got that thermometer outside the kitchen window and let us know what's going on there. We'll also take a look at what's going on with garbage in the ocean. It's not looking good. We'll talk about that coming up here in just a little bit. Plus we've got a lot of other things to talk about for tonight including the look at the weather conditions for stargazing. The Perseid meteor shower is peaking over the next couple of days. We'll talk about that, and we'll also do a look at what you can do if you'd like to get involved in a new hobby, which involves communication and emergency disasters, uh, help during disasters, things like that, class being taught in the next couple of weeks, and we'll talk about that coming up here in just a little bit. Questions, comments, concerns, austin.onic at wreg.com. Uh, Lisa Ortoseco, hope I'm saying that correctly, ready for some rain to sleep by. We might be able to help you on that, depending on where your location is, and Chastity Michelle Bailey, welcome from Whitehaven, and thanks for joining us on the show for tonight. Let's take a look and see what's going on where it comes to rainfall across the area. We do have, again, a few areas of spotty showers out there. Not a lot going on at this point, but most of the activity, as we told you, yesterday evening was going to be along and south of I-40. A few very light sprinkles going through parts of Shelby County, North Shelby County earlier tonight, and that's about the end of it, down to the south of the Tennessee-Mississippi state line. That's where we're seeing the heaviest amount of rainfall, such as it is. Scattered showers from around Aubrey and Arkansas to Faulkner, Corinth, Kossuth, and, and Iuka over toward areas of northeast Mississippi at this time. Uh, Paula Johnson from Batesville, Mississippi. You're getting a few more scattered showers down into that area, Batesville located right there, and seeing the heaviest activity working its way up toward around Water Valley, Oxford, Abbeville, Holly Springs, I-22 picking up some of those scattered showers. Not much to show in the way of rainfall changing over to lightning, but we may see some more of those embedded thunderstorms out there later on this evening and mostly south of I-40. More pockets of showers and thunderstorms developing back into central and southeastern Arkansas, and that's going to continue off and on throughout the course of the rest of the evening. So more activity like this, not out of the question as we go into the evening hours. But again, not not seeing a lot for everybody just yet. West Tennessee, some light scattered showers east of Jackson, back toward the Tennessee River Valley, and not that much again in southeast Arkansas, yes, not that much going on in northeast Arkansas, the Missouri Boot Hill or northwest Tennessee, and all of what you're seeing around the Memphis metro area at this time is mainly just all that moisture hanging in the air, and there's not that much left of it at this point in the way of showers, but more could be possible into the course of the next several hours overnight. Off and on, again, not looking at too much coming on through. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what's going on out across the area where it comes to things like burn bans, something for uh, camping and agriculture to take a look at. We've had some decent amounts of rainfall over the course of the last several days and weeks, so as of right now, this is something we don't often see. The entire state of Arkansas 
No burn bans in effect right now, so definitely good news on that. More information from arkfireinfo.org. We can get more about that through our website at wrag.com. Uh, the Mississippi Forestry Commission not seeing anything. We have no burn bans in effect at this time. So as of right now, again, nothing going on in the way of major problems uh, for anything like that. But you do have, again, the possibility that if we continue to get fairly dry, but all burn bans at this time for the entire state of Mississippi, Mississippi have also been gone from out there. More from the Mississippi uh, Forestry Commission at mfc.ms.gov if you'd like to see more information there. Uh, Tennessee does not issue burn bans except in an extraordinary case situation. Uh, and as of right now, burning is permitted across a good portion of the state with important exceptions. If you'd like to know more, go to this website up here, burnsafetn.org, and find out more about the rules, about what you need to know when you're burning something, if you are burning something, and just use a lot of caution out there. Once again, we'll be looking at what's left of a stationary front sticking around the Mid-South area. There's not a lot going on here. We have this stationary front sticking around down to our south and that will be continuing again to be kind of holding steady over much of the area sitting right across the mid-south right in that soup of precipitation causing moisture from the Gulf of Mexico and we've got plenty of that if you haven't been outside for a while you can tell that we've got some decent amounts of moisture out across the mid-south and it's going to be feeling pretty muggy over the course of the next several days so get ready for more of that as long as this front continues to kind of wibble wobble its way back across the area that's where we're going to be seeing the possibility of these showers and thunderstorms going on. And that's exactly what we have again for tonight. Now, so far, we're not seeing anything in the way of major problems. The National Weather Service uh, showing a possibility of a few strong thunderstorms over North Mississippi. Again, gusty winds, localized rainfall, and most of that is down south of Oxford, Water Valley, into that location. So we're just not seeing a lot for the rest of the Mid-South. Now, we could be seeing more of that into the next couple of days. For tonight, temperatures, again, not doing too bad. We're going to be back into the mid to upper 60s to right around the lower 70s. And best rainfall chances south of I-40 into and around southeast Arkansas and northern areas of Mississippi. Now getting into tomorrow, high temperatures will be again hot and humid back in the mid-80s. Plenty of humidity out there, so that's going to make it major league uncomfortable for staying outside for very long periods of time. Rainfall chances will be with us. Best chance again south of the metro into northern Mississippi and southeastern parts of Arkansas. If you have any plans for outdoors, even if you're north of I-40 in Memphis, take the umbrella with you because there could be some more spotty showers popping up exactly like what we saw today. A little bit cooler in parts of the Mid-South tomorrow. Areas back up around northwest Tennessee could make their way into around the mid-60s or so. And chances of rainfall, once again, greatest into around Clarksdale, back over toward Tupelo, up to around Corinth and Iuka. We may see more activity taking place there more than anything else. For for the area on Thursday, temperatures back into around the mid to upper 80s. And that chance of showers and thunderstorms will remain across the area as we get into around the rest of the forecast period there. Toward Thursday night, low temperatures again dropping into the upper 60s to lower 70s. That tropical air setting through and sticking around, not going anyplace. Spotty chances of showers and thunderstorms start to spread north of I-40 as we go into the next couple of days. And heading toward Friday, temperatures will again, or pardon me, Thursday back in the upper 80s or so. Chance of showers and thunderstorms getting one day ahead of myself there. More chances of showers showers and thunderstorms into Thursday night, isolated chances only, and low temperatures only back in the mid-70s. Now we'll talk about Friday. Temperatures in the high 80s, very much on the warm side, hot and humid out there. Could be looking at heat index temperatures in the high 90s with all those temperatures getting pretty warm out that direction. And again, the possibility of some scattered showers and thunderstorms. How about the weekend? Temperatures on Saturday, upper 80s to right around 90 degrees. And also, again, seeing the possibility of pretty widespread chances of showers and thunderstorms coming on through. And that also goes, unfortunately, for Sunday. Highs back in the mid to upper 80s and chances of showers and thunderstorms 50% plus. So what could be a rainy weekend coming up, we'll keep our eyes on that and keep you updated over the next several days. National Weather Service and the Weather Prediction Center, areas along this front could be triggering off training effects to where you have showers and thunderstorms one after the other developing, dropping rainfall over an area, moving onwards, and then another one comes along and another one and another one. You get the idea. What we're looking at here in this green shaded area 
from northwest Mississippi all the way over to northwest Georgia could be the best possibility for flash flooding. So anywhere from around, say, I-55 all the way over to Atlanta, if you're traveling through that area tonight or early tomorrow, ground's going to be saturated, and that could lead to some flash flooding potential. So please keep that in mind if you are going to be traveling. For severe weather purposes for tonight, we're just not seeing much of anything. In fact, the threat of thunderstorms will be along and south of I-44 tonight. Severe weather chances tomorrow, not seeing it, but thunderstorms, again, could be possible in this green shaded area for parts of the Mid-South as we go into tomorrow. The best threat of severe weather out into the front range of the Rockies in Colorado, New Mexico, and Wyoming. And then as we head into around Thursday, uh, Wednesday into Thursday, we'll see again better chances of showers and thunderstorms for all of the Mid-South in that light green shaded category we have there, and the stronger chances of thunderstorms back up around the Dakotas, western areas of Minnesota, and northeast Nebraska. So that'll be the best possibility. Not looking at a huge chance of anything else really going on anytime soon. The next four to eight days will show thunderstorm chances, yes, but does not look like severe weather uh, taking place at this time. Thanks to everybody who's just joining us on our live netcast. If you have any questions, please say so. Drop them into the uh, comments section at this point, and we'll be glad to answer what we can. Feel free to share our video as well. Uh, hit the share button and share it around Facebook so everybody else can see what's going on in and around the Mid-South. Bart Thompson, notice summer birds are gone. Squirrels going to extremes and gathering, plus August Temperatures only in the 80s. I'm wondering if we're in a store in store for an early fall and a hard winter. Very good question. Uh, that's again something that we would love to say yes to, but unfortunately, at this time of the year, as they say in stock market circles, past success, past ventures are no guarantee of future success, or something like that. Uh, again, what we have over the next several days and weeks is going to be uh, the potential for cooler weather. As long as those fronts stick around, yeah, it's feeling a little bit on the cooler side out there, but unfortunately, all it's doing for right now is just basically giving us some more rainfall. It's a minor dip in the pattern. It's a change. It's nothing that's going to say that uh, this right here is going to affect all of that in the way of weather coming up in the next several weeks. I'd love to say we're in for an early autumn where it comes to temperatures like that. This is nice. It's just not anything indicative of anything huge going on. Uh, as to the birds and the squirrels, Putting in overtime, again, if they know something we don't, they're not telling us, so it'd be nice to say yes to that, but as of right now, uh, for right now, it looks like just a normal dip in the pattern, which can happen, doesn't really necessarily mean anything colder is heading our way, although I talked to my mom back in Kansas last night, and she said they've had temperatures almost into the 40s in the last couple of days, and I implored her to send some of that weather down here. Uh, so as of right now, it doesn't really look like it, but again, hopefully we're going to be getting something cooled off. This has been very nice where it comes to the uh, temperatures out there. Heading down to the Gulf Coast, we have two things to talk about for tonight. One is just a storm system off into around portions of the Atlantic. It is way out to the east of the Leeward Islands, sitting across portions of the Atlantic out in that location. And so far, it doesn't look like much. Uh, this may or may not develop immediately, but there are signs that it will be developing later and heading toward the east coast. We'll talk about that coming up in just a little bit. Franklin is a tropical storm, and this one is looking like it is going to be uh, heading a little bit farther back toward the west-northwest at this time, heading northwest at about 13 miles per hour. We mentioned this because if you are going to be heading anywhere north of this, up into around, say, the Gulf of Mexico, especially uh, east or west of Florida, east of Brownsville, something to keep an eye on here just to be on the safe side because, again, this is something that we want to make certain everybody knows about before traveling out that direction. Now, taking a look at what are called, as you might guess, the spaghetti models, uh, as you take a look at all these different models laid over one map, this shows, again, what the computer models think is going to happen. And notice that there are a couple of them. Uh, the mean of the model right now showing uh, back toward just south of the Rio Grande. And one model in particular showing a northwesterly course. Now, the conventional wisdom, all of everything showing up here, shows the storm going west into Mexico. But if you're traveling to, say, the Texas Gulf Coast, Louisiana, anytime soon, I would watch this 
with a lot of interest just to make certain that you do not have to turn back around and head back out of a particular location. That's Franklin. How does the other one look? Well, this is where it gets even more interesting because over the next several days, this goes right into areas north of the Bahamas and could be making a beeline for the southeast coast of the United States, right back up to around Florida and the Carolinas. Now, again, it does. this is not a guarantee. This thing could go many different directions, but the general idea is that it's heading for southeastern United States, and there's a couple of uh, storm prediction models that are showing it strengthening into possible hurricane status. So this could be something uh, to take a look at as well. This comes from a very easy to remember website. It's SpaghettiModels.com, otherwise known as Mike's Weather Page. Tons of great weather information on here. Uh, models and graphics and satellite pictures and radars and lions and tigers and bears. Oh my, there's all sorts of things on here. So this is a very cool web section to take a look at. How are we doing when it comes to the current season? I uh, had some questions asked about this on Facebook over the last 24 hours. Again, the forecast is for 11 to 17 named storms. We're up to number seven with Franklin. Hurricanes five through nine, that's kind of low so far. And major hurricanes, category three or above, two to four. Again, we haven't really hit that just yet, but that's something to watch out for. So, so far we're on track, but it definitely bears watching over the course of the next several days and weeks. So something to think about there if you are going to be uh, traveling, especially to the East Coast, the Gulf Coast, the Bahamas, uh, the Caribbean, anything like that. Please keep an eye on what's going on for your safety's sake out there. More news about the oceans and not good news about a new garbage patch about the size of Texas found into the North Pacific Ocean that brings up the number of garbage patches Huge ones out there encompassing millions of square miles covered by plastic and floating debris that humans cause. If you'd like to know more about this and more importantly some suggestions about what you can do to help out reduce that, you can find out more about sciencealerts.com and also they'll be posted on my social media pages as well. Here's something else to take a look at from the Office of Preparedness at Shelby County, Tennessee at staysafeshelby.us. The Germantown Fire Department will be offering a new amateur radio class That'll be held at Germantown Fire Station number 4 at 3031 Forest Hill Irene Road. The course is free. The textbook is $25.00 well worth it on that and testing fee after the end of six weeks or so is 10 bucks to get your FCC amateur radio license. If you'd like to know more about this you can contact Captain Howard Thompson with the Germantown Fire Department. They have the registration link on here and his uh, email address Hang on a second, lost my cursor down here. His email address is jelly at Germantown. Where to go? Hang on. Germantown, Germantown hyphen TN dot gov. If you'd like to know more about that, uh, Captain Thompson is also an amateur radio operator, works a lot with emergency communications. And if you'd like to know more about this, again, you can go to staysafeshelby.us and I'll be posting more about this for later on. So if you have any information, this is for the uh, technical license, the lowest level license offered. So it's a great place for newbies. If you've never taken this course before, if you'd like to get your kids involved with this, Something to think about. I got my license from the Delta Club in Bartlett uh, back in about February of 2000. I wish I would have gotten my license back uh, when I was my kid's age because it's a very fun hobby to have and a great opportunity to help during disasters. And if you'd like to know more about this, great opportunity to learn more about what's going on in and around portions of the area. Also a great place to go to if you'd like to know more about stuff, uh, the Memphis Astronomical Society. Everybody's asking questions about weather for the eclipse and again as of right now signs are kind of pointing to not too good from the extended forecast. If you'd like to know more, Rick Honey from the Memphis Astronomical Society has posted a neat little video about various long-range forecasting options and you can get there by going to uh, Facebook.com and you slash groups slash Memphis Astro or just type in Memphis Astronomical Society in the top and you'll be able to get there and find out a little bit more about this. It's a group so you'll have to ask permission to join but it's a great way to learn more about astronomy and finding out more about this. I've also posted that link to my Facebook page. That's at Facebook.com slash Austin Onik W-R-E-G if you'd like to know a little bit more about that. Obviously you know about that because you're on the page right now if you're on Facebook. Also have to thank the uh, Marion School District 
in Marion, Arkansas, showing their teachers getting ready to go. They got the eclipse glasses all set and ready, so looking good. I'm sure there's a lot more teachers and school districts out there getting things ready. I'll be at St. Francis of Assisi in Cordova for the big day, rain or shine, to see how things are going on there. But great to see people getting excited about this. It's going to be a great opportunity to learn more about what's going on, and you can see more about this on my Twitter page. That's at uh, twitter.com slash aonic underscore wreg3. If you'd like to see more about what's going on in and around the Mid-South. Again, all the information available there. We'll have more on your forecast again tomorrow with News Channel 3's Todd Demers, but I'll have more on your forecast tomorrow morning starting at 7 a.m. with Bob and Josh. If you'd like to know more about that, that's on AM 730 Yahoo Sports Radio with Talk Back Live. Sports chat extraordinaire from across the Mid-South. Good opportunity to learn more about what's going on across the area with weather, sports, news. they got all kinds of stuff on there, so get your morning started right with Bob and Josh, 7 to 9 a.m. Monday through Friday. Again, questions, ideas, comments, let me know. Austin.onic at WRAG.com for more. Thanks to everybody for some uh, great pictures out there. Lisa Ortoseco. Uh, again, hope I'm saying that right. I hate to slaughter anybody's names with a name like Onic out there. Meant to get our generator fixed. Uh, they before the storm hit won't make that mistake again you know, probably a good idea on that so thank you for sharing that we'll have more details again coming up later on uh, Jim Jaggers on News Channel 3 at 10 in just about an hour from the time we sign off here and more details on your forecast at this website wreg.com slash weather I'm meteorologist Austin Onik live and direct from House Onik somewhere in Memphis, Tennessee more coming up on your forecast throughout the rest of the evening online and more coming up on News Channel Lisa glad to hear him pronounce it correctly. I hate to mispronounce names. Stay tuned for more with News Channel 3 on air and online, and stay tuned for more coming up again tonight at 10 and with Todd Demers bright and early tomorrow morning. Thanks for joining us on our live Facebook video weather update.